The hoop house frame went up in July. The polyethylene went on in September. Now we are back at Adam Montree's hoop house in Bath, Michigan in early January to see how well those crops are doing. Well, we do harvest to order. So what we do is send out an email on, Tuesday, or on Sunday night and then people um, send back their email to us by Tuesdays at 4 o'clock and then we harvest for order. So we say in their email on Sunday, you know, we have this, 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 and this. So this week we have scallions, carrots, kale, um, some turnips, and a salad mix that has baby spinach in it. So we say this is what it is, this is how much it costs, and then people email back what they want. And then they pick up here at the farm either on Wednesdays between 5 and 7 p.m., or my wife and I both work on campus in Ag Hall, so we take some stuff on campus on Thursday, and, and people on campus who want to order then pick up on Thursdays, um, and we have a set time, depending on what our schedules are that week, that we let people know. So explain to me now, you started out, we got the, I was <coughs> out here when you finished the house, Yep. and when, when was that? Um, I think we covered it about the middle to the end of August, somewhere in there, because we planted scallions and carrots August, 12th or 11th or 12th, something like that, and the cover wasn't on yet. So it was at least another week or two after that. So end of August, early September, we covered the, covered the house. And then planted basically from the second week of August through the middle of October. So the baby spinach down at the far end is about the last thing that we planted. So we basically started at that end with the scallions and carrots and then just kept working our way this way, um, sort of planting as we went a little bit. So, when did you get all the planning in? So I think August 15th or, I'm sorry, October 15th or October 17th, somewhere in there, was our last plant date. So, and we know from some stuff at Michigan State and some growers around the state that that's kind of the, seems to be for our area, the, the second or third week of October is as late as you can get something in and still have something to harvest. So you can plant after that, but sometimes it'll just come up and germinate and just sit there with a couple of leaves until February and then it'll start to grow again, which isn't necessarily a bad thing either, but if you can get everything in on time and you can harvest through the winter and then come back in in February when things are going to start growing and replant. So you can harvest through the winter and then have a new crop coming in um, that starts in February, harvesting maybe March or so. So it will actually continue growing. So when you cut some greens, they'll come back? Through the winter? In most years, yes. It'll, it'll grow. Um, you can cut it a lot slower than it would in, say, April and May or uh, September, October, early November. But you can cut, and it'll, you know, those months it's usually a two-week two grow back, maybe three-week, depending if you get later or earlier um, in the spring or later in the fall. In the winter... Usually it might be as long as you know, six, six weeks, seven weeks, at, you know, the most to get it to come back. This year, it seems like it's been consistent all around the state that every grower that we talk with, days that they've planted in the past years, you know, had things in by the middle of October or sec first, second week of October, they've been able to cut and get it to come back. This year it just seems to not be doing that. Um, and I think, it's, one, it's a combination of the, the heat and the light. But this year, since we've been so cloudy, it just seems to be a com it seems to be a lot more of the light. We work with a grower who's got some houses that he can heat because um, he does cut flowers or I'm sorry, he does hanging baskets and bedding plant flowers in the spring. And he started doing this in the winter, so he's got a little heat he can put in. And he shut his heat off two weeks ago because he had been putting heat into them and they weren't growing at all. So just because our lights were our light is so low this year, it's so cloudy. So we were just talking to a grower up in Frankfurt that. Two days, two or three days ago, and he said they are having their fourth sun event since the end of October. So, really, really cloudy this year. So, you sort of roll with it as you can. Now, it's amazing. <coughs> Give me the cycle of the last 24 hours, what the outdoor temperature was and what the indoor temperature was in here as you went through that cycle. We're now in, uh, this is late January, mid yep. to late January, and yep. what are we seeing inside the house in a 24-hour cycle? So... Outside versus inside, um, we've got some little easy, relatively cheap temperature sensors that are that I got for Christmas. Um, that I think yesterday it was, so what is it right now? It's about 1 o'clock. Um, yesterday it was, let me think here, around zero. Well, it was 20, around 20, 15 or 20 during the day. 
At night, it was down towards zero, maybe something like negative two. This morning, it, when we got up, it was seven degrees outside, and it was about 13 and a half, I think, in, inside here, and there were a couple more degrees, so about 16 and a half underneath the cover. Now we've got the cover open. It's been sunny all day long. This is the sunniest day we've had in a long time, and right now it says it's 70. I think the temperature sensor said it's about 71 degrees in here. So <coughs> it's getting a little warm for these crops. What we might do is actually open the door a little bit. Um, we do have some thermostatically controlled vents up top, but they went on late last year, and we don't have the outside cut open yet, so we can't open those. So. As soon as it gets warm out and we can get a ladder, we'll get it. But right now, it's a, a comfortable 70 degrees in here. How, in opening side vents, those vents, doors, um, through the entire cycle, summer, winter, fall, spring, um, does it really take somebody being here all the time to make sure that, uh, and how responsive is it? You open a door and the temperature immediately goes down? or? So it's, it's fairly responsive. Um, part, one of the things that we're venting for is temperature. But another thing, maybe, I'm not going to say more importantly, but equally as important is humidity. So right now, or this morning, it was about 80% humidity in here. And yesterday, it, when it was, or this morning, when it was 7 degrees, it was about still 79 or 80% humidity. So it's a sort of a strange, strange thing that happens. Um, so we like to vent, one, for the, to, to cool it off a little, but also to try to get some of that moisture out. Because what happens is if it's too humid in here, it's too moist, and the temperatures are, you know, in the 40s, 50s, as it begins to drop, that we start to get a really nice environment for diseases, so especially fung fungi, so some molds, that white mold especially in the winter. Um, so we like to vent for, uh, for temperature control, but also for humidity control. So what do you do about any kind of, you had any kind of disease problems or any kind of pest problems? You just got started. So. Right. So we haven't had any disease problems yet. Um, I did come out here yesterday and notice we've got a mole. Um, that's the first one that we've seen. Oh, he's down there too. So those, it's probably the same one. Um, we just saw that this week. So that's not uncommon if you think about it. You know, in the winter there's food, it's warm, it's protected. It's kind of like a little spa in here for, for little furry things. So, um... But that's the first, first sign that we've had of it all winter, so we'll just go get a trap and set a trap. But it probably both spots where we can see that there's something active and, and hopefully take care of that relatively quickly. So, it's the other question that you had asked that I didn't answer was, does someone have to be here every day to, to monitor this? Um, both my wife and I work on campus, and so we've sort of set it up so that we don't have to be here every day to monitor it. Um, one way that we've done that is th this interior cover. You can use the polyethylene, which is the same roof plastic. You can use that to cover. But what happens with that is, while well, we think it might be a little bit warmer, it doesn't breathe. So what we've done by using the row cover is that if we... I was fortunate enough to work from home today, and it's sunny, I could come out here and open it. But if we were both on campus and it was sunny out, that that material is breathable. So it's not going to get really hot under there. It's not going to cook it like it would with the polyethylene if someone wasn't here to open it. Uh, the other thing that we've done is the thermostatically controlled vents. Um, we really like that. And other growers who ev that we know who are even there during the day have said that they like that because they might be somewhere else on the farm. They might be weeding something. They might be packing something. They might be harvesting something. And to have to stop and come over, you know, even if it's a small farm, to come over, open the vents, go back and do what you were doing. And then if it gets cold again, you might have to come back and close the vents. So... Um, I think that was a good investment. And then for us, we did thermostatically controlled roll-up sides, which is a bit extra. That was maybe about $2,000 more than just having a manual one. But again, with us both working on campus, in the spring, in the fall, especially where it's warm during the day and cool at night, we may have things where we leave before it's sunny and we get home after the sun's gone down. But if it was sunny during the day and warm, those sides needed to go up and down. So that's just a little bit of peace of mind for us to that we think was worth the cost. And that's another thing that we've talked to some farmers who have those who even work on the farm. Um, and they've said that that's something they're really happy that they did, simply for the, for the same reason as events. They can be doing something else and they don't have to run and are always thinking about, oh, I need, to, I need to run and open the house or close the house. It's, it's sort of an investment that is going to save some time, which is what we're looking for.